All right, YouTube, how you doing? Another video here I'm gonna do on uh, APRS and soda, special request. Um, so what we're gonna do is I'm gonna explain basically uh, FT, FT2, it's like a tongue twister for me, FT2DR, how to use it for APRS to soda, and some of the specifics you need to know if you wanna use this thing uh, specifically to spot yourself while conducting uh, summits on the air. So uh, real quick though, I do wanna make mention that I have uh, two different radios, real quick. Both of these are Yaesu. This is the Yaesu VX8, and this is the Yaesu FT2D. Uh, the way the Yaesus, they're heavy menu-driven type radios, but what I'll say is that they both operate almost identical as far as how the messaging uh, goes through these things and whatnot, the menu system. The only difference is very small alphanumeric keypad and small LCD display, and this one, of course, is touchscreen, but they do the same thing. The other thing I do want to mention is uh, this is the replacement model for this radio right here. Uh, this one is no longer made. I may sell this since uh, I've got this one. Uh, and then people always ask me, hey, what is this thingy, that thingy that's on top of your radio, that thingy right there? But maybe if I bring it in close, you can see what it is, GPS. This right here is the external GPS antenna, and this is a little bracket that goes on there. And then I put an SMA extension on here, SMA to B and C, um, because I would pop this antenna off, and I was using uh, my roll-up J-pole, which connects right to B and C. So I kind of needed that, and I'm gonna take that thing off too when I take my uh, this one out. I also have this same antenna in an SMA version, and uh, I use it for this right here. It's laying over there. Uh, I thought I was noticing a little bit of an interruption of my signal with this antenna. Uh, because of this, uh, it's possible, maybe, maybe not. Both are uh, was IPX67 rating, so they can handle getting wet very well. And I love these radios. If you're looking for a uh, radio to use for summits on the air, uh, highly recommend the ASUS. You can't get this anywhere once you get it used. This is the one that I would go with now uh, because of APRS, because it's solid built, uh, the touch screen is nice, and it also has uh, Yaesu System Fusion and Wires X, a digital mode, which I'm kind of new on, and there'll be some more videos on that. So anyways, that's where we're going. So I kind of want to talk briefly about the gateway. So what is APRS to SOTA? Let's first start talking about spotting. I've said it many times before, spotting is king when you're on top of a hill doing summits on the air. Uh, and if you're not familiar with that, uh, there's activators and there's chasers. Activators go to the top of the mountain, chasers are down below chasing the activator. The activator's doing all the work up there hiking those hills, of course, um, and he needs to notify all the people out and about that, hey, I'm up here, and how's that done? It's done via spotting. So when you spot through this APRS to SOTA, it goes out into the gateway. It goes from the APRS to SOTA uh, database and it pushes out to all kinds of different apps that are out there. I use Soda Goat. Uh, there's other people who use Ham Alert. I also have Ham Alert. It's on my uh, on my cell phone. Both of those are, um, and you can find these things. That way, people know you're out there. I mean, you're running QRP. QRP means low power, generally 10 watts or less, and uh, five watts right here. But I also use my KX2 at 10 watts or less. And uh, so you really want to kind of be heard. Plus, you're on top of the mountain. Really helps. So you put a lot of effort. You go pretty remote. Ideas do this. The other thing with APRS, I'm a big fan of. Uh, since we're talking APRS to soda and spotting, but uh, my wife also sends me text messages on this um, via an app on her phone. She's a ham, so she has the app on her phone. It's APRS-TX, and I got a video on that, and I'll link it above right here uh, about how to do that. Um, but when I'm out hiking, she's able to send me a quick message because my cell phone doesn't work and say, hey, you okay, or you're late for dinner, or whatever, and vice versa. I can send her that message back, and it goes straight to her cell phone. Um, so it's very handy for that. The other thing I use APRS for that's related d directly with soda is when you're in the back country, your phone doesn't work very well. Um, this right here, I put an alert in saying, hey, I should be on this summit about this time. And as soon as I get out of my truck, this has a specific one. It's my call sign, KG6HQD-7. Dash 7 dash seven identifies it as a handheld. Um, but they all go through the gateway the same, by the way. But anyways, uh, and it pings my signal as I'm going all the way up. So people can watch me on APRS.FI, Foxtrot India. Uh, my wife checks that out, makes sure that I'm still moving. If I'm moving, I'm alive, she feels. And also people that are waiting to see what time I'm going to get on the summit because you give ETAs, but things happen, you're late, traffic, uh, who knows? And it kind of gives the uh, the chaser the ability to kind of plan around their day to see where you're at. Right now, I've got uh, 521 over here on the base station because I'm waiting on 
Uh, Adam, K6ARK, he's about ready to crest uh, San Jacinto. Should be some good snow up there. We've had a lot of rain. Uh, so if that radio goes off, I'm going to hit pause. I'm going to run over there, or maybe I'll leave it running so you can hear it. I don't know. And I'll uh, work Adam really quick. Uh, so anyways, lots of useful things for APRS in, in the soda world. So a couple things there. So number one thing, uh, in order to use the gateway, you must be registered on APRS to soda. Um, there is the person who developed the, the gateway is Stuart Wilkinson. Uh, remember, Soda Summits on the Air came from England, so everything is a UK type deal. So this call sign is going to throw you for a curve. It's Golf Zero Lima Golf Sierra, Stuart Wilkinson. There will be a PDF on my website, kg6hqd.us, uh, and I will put this PDF on there that's directly off of the Soda Watch uh, website. That way you can find it much easier, and I'll put a couple of the links. And I'm also going to put uh, some of those links down below in uh, the description of this video so you can see in addition to uh, my Yesu FT2DR and the accessories that I use especially this antenna right here uh, this is the BNC version I have the SMA one but this antenna right here I much prefer because obviously it gets hung up on trees it doesn't bend break um, so and I have some other little features that uh, I use but I'll put some links down below for this radio specifically in the description uh, off my Amazon account anything you do there it doesn't increase your fees or nothing it just gives me some advertising kickbacks and I do appreciate that so um, the message format I'm going to show you the message format but there is a very specific message format you must use when you're doing APRS to soda and it's basically the summit ID uh, which in my case uh, whiskey six is like California uh, and then you have stroke or the backslash and then Charlie Tango or Southern Sierra SS or SD Southern Desert. Um, there's these different areas within the Whiskey 6 zone. So and then dash and then the, usually the three digit numeric for the summit ID. So that's called the summit ID. You must put that in there specific. You put a space, you put your frequency. And uh, a lot of times for me, it's either 146.520 space FM because the HF, UHF, I usually do my activations on 520, but you can do 550 or 580 or whatever you want. Now, but as long as you tell your chasers where you're going to be, that's the idea. And what mode? FM, obviously, if you're going to use uh, an HT like this. And that's the item we're talking about today. So 146.520 space FM, and then space, and you can put a short message in there. I usually put something to the effect of on now, calling CQ, or uh, sometimes I put, you know, last call if I'm about ready to go QRT. QRT means I'm about ready to shut it down. A um, couple quick Q codes. Uh, so when I say QRT, obviously I'm going to shut it down like I just said. Um, QRM, you get some interference. So, you know, you're getting some bleed over from other stations. Usually that happens on, on HF. Uh, QRP, though, is uh, low power. So if you're running low power, which is generally 10 watts or less, Again, this is 5 watts, so that fits in that category. So some of the Q signals you'll hear. If you got questions on any of them, put a comment below, and we'll get it answered for you. And I have a couple apps I'll tell you about that has all the Q signals on there. You can check that out, too, especially if you're new to ham radio. So uh, also, if you're going to make a comment down below, I'd ask you to put your call sign, if you have one, or that you're pending one, uh, or you're going to take one, or you're just finding the channel. What, give me a little something there in case I bump into you later. And also put in there where you're from. Uh, when I do these videos, if you watch some other videos on my channel, you notice that I, I get like, hey, you know, N4EX from uh, North Carolina, you know, something like that. They tell me where they're from, their call sign, their name. Usually, I love it when I'm out on the hill, and that's what I'm hearing because it's quick for me to kind of reference those things. So if you're going to put comments below, I ask you to include your call sign, your name, where you're from, or how you found me, or something like that. Uh, engage the thread there. The other thing, subscribe if you haven't already. I would ask you to subscribe to my channel. Uh, it helps me out. I like uh, meeting with a bunch of different people and, of course, share all these videos. And let me know what other kind of videos you want. This video right here is from a subscriber who asked me to do APRS to soda with the FT2DR. He's waiting for his to show up in the mail because they're on back order right now. So here we go. I guess I should get to it. Battling on for a while. All right. So the one thing you need to know, other than my cell phone buzzing on the table, is, uh, you know, quickly turn it on, bottom button on the right. Uh, i got to figure out how far away i got to be so you can see this stuff right here. Okay, good. Now, this is generally me when I'm out hiking. The top band is 146.520. Ooh, something I know. See where it says DN? Yeah, I don't want that. So i got to hit mode. And DN, VW, that should be FM. So if Kevin calls us, she will hear him. Now, notice that down below, 144.390. You need to know that frequency. That will be in your manual too, generally speaking. That's the North American uh, APRS upload, download. It's the frequency you need to know for this radio to talk to the APRS digipeters and all the other stations out there. 
So B band must be the 144.390, just like it is. Now, why is it gray? It's gray because I have A band selected. So I'm just gonna push AB. We're gonna assume you don't know much about this radio. We're gonna push AB. And now you notice that the B band 144.390 is, is uh, more bolder, I guess, and the other one kind of grayed out. I turn the volume down on the B band. You can see the line probably going up or down. I can't tell because it's backwards for me. Uh, there's a very small line underneath the frequency. There, now you can see it. Okay, see that? I turn that down because I really don't want to hear it. The other thing is that must be in FM for this to work. Now, you see, you hear that, that station that came through? It's already picking up some sign. So if you leave this thing all the way up or even up loud enough, you're going to hear that squawking every time it picks up a machine. Uh, so I don't do that, and I also put on APRS mute. I don't want to hear this thing going back and forth all the time. Not my bag. So what else do I need to know? I need to know that if I want to get into the APRS menu, what I need to do is I need to push and hold display, and I'm going to do that for you so you can see it. I'm trying to make sure you get this in here. So when I push and hold display, you can see this menu comes up. See where it says APRS? This side over here. It's all backwards for me. So I'm going to push APRS. When I push APRS, this menu comes up. To turn APRS on, you have all these different menus in here. You can rotate the dial, and you can go through all of them if you want. And I would. I would go through your manual, and I would understand what each one of these different menus mean and set them accordingly. Uh, I shut a lot of them off. I have specific ones on. But the one that we all have to have on is APRS modem. This is how you're going to activate APRS on this radio so that it actually is going through the modem in a sending signals and receiving signals. You have to touch modem, so modem is selected. So now I'm just gonna touch it. When I touch it, it shows that it's off right now. And I just simply, oh come on, focus. It shows it's off right now, so I simply rotate it to where it says 1200 uh, BPS, bots per second. And then, just hit the back button. When I hit the back button, now it's on. So AP, hit back button again, back button again, so APRS is now on. Now when APRS is on, you're gonna see that A12 is flashing. You see the A12 flashing? And then there'll be a little circle. Uh, I'm trying to keep it from blinding. There'll be a little circle with a dot in it, and that's generally when it connects. Now we can force a signal to it, get going back and forth, and I'm kinda of hoping that here soon you're gonna see a little bit of a, you're gonna hear that squawking sound. So basically right now, it's sending or able to send and receive stuff. But I turned off a lot of things. I don't want to hear weather channels. I don't want to hear uh, somebody driving in their car. The only thing I want this thing to do for me, because I can turn those on if I need them out in the woods, if I need to find other stations, I can turn all that stuff on. But the only thing I want it to do right now is I want it to send my beacon position and I want to send my message to the APRS different digit peters. And I'm in my garage with this little rubber duck, and it still will work. But I want to be able to send and receive messages. When I'm up on a hill, it's, it's like no problem. Like right now, even in some of the canyons, it works really well. Uh, so just keep that in mind. It's working now. So what's the next step now? So the next step is I need to go into FM. This is how I'm going to send a message. Let's see if I can do this backwards. So this FM right here, push that. And then what you see is you see message list. Well, first of all, see beacon TX, that's beacon transmit. If I push that, so if I can do this backwards, you're gonna, it's basically going to push my beacon, my position out there. That's that noise. So I just sent my position, my packet position, out through the APRS uh, world, if you will. I know hit Keller Peak can hit it, uh, but again, I'm in my garage. So that's one of the features. I'm doing this completely backwards. So anyways, uh, message list and station list. See those three on the bottom? So you have beacon transmit, it's all from this side. So you have uh, beacon transmit, message list, and station list. Those are the ones you're gonna use for your APRS stuff. So I'm just gonna go to message list. Now I can see that uh, opens up the APRS message list. If there were messages, I could hit top, reply, whatever. But now what I need to do is I'm gonna hit this little keyboard thing right here, and now I have this display up. So when this display is up, um, I can do message edit, which I'm going to do. I can transmit my beacon again. I can clear my transmission. There's a bunch of everything. And I have this feature where I can open up even more uh, or close it, depending upon where it's at. So for right here, I'm going to do message edit. When I do message edit, this is what you're going to see. Nothing. In the to field, so this is very important. In the to field, after you're registered through the APRS to SOTA gateway, 
which is real simply to send the guy an email. Uh, you can check that out later on, get the stuff on my website, like I said. But the thing to remember is it is not Sierra Zero Tango Alpha. It is not zero. It is soda, Sierra Oscar Tango Alpha, just soda. If your radio requires a suffix, you can do dash zero if you want. But all you got to do in the two field is put soda, S-O-T-A. So I'm going to go ahead and put that in. Um, do this live real time. All right, so the first thing, let me go back once so I can show you. So when it's in this right here, it, there's a place to edit the call sign. God, come on, focus, baby. All right, so it's this side right there. So, and then hit it again. Nope, sorry. Back. Oops. Message list. And then I'm going to do this. And then message edit. Okay, so after I do message edit, I push that little keyboard again, and now you see this right here, this field. And now what I want to do is I want to do edit CS, or edit call sign. So I'll push edit call sign, and then all I do is push edit call sign. I'm trying to give you a step by step. Now it's in there, right there. Now you can do this if you want. You can do it this way, which I don't. Uh, I'm just going to use the alphanumeric keypad in here. And then you notice two down here? You have, God, I hate how that thing goes bright. I'm really sorry. I don't know what I can do to control that. There we go. So figure this out here a little bit. It's really super hot. Why is it washing out? So bright. So I have these two different little uh, deals right here. Maybe because that's what it is. Yeah. All right. So the alphanumeric keypad right there. I see the arrows, that's how I can go back and forth. And also the top of them, a little arrow with a box, that can go back, that's like your delete key. So I'm gonna type in SOTA, S-O-T-A. Uh, so, and it doesn't matter, lowercase or uppercase. So S, O, T, A, SOTA. So the other thing too is, uh, I just happened to have it on all caps, it didn't really matter. If and I, if you type from one box to the next, it'll move over and it'll start typing. If it's the same box, like uh, M and N and O are all in the same box, if you need to toggle over, that's what the arrow keys are for. Hit it to where you get to your letter you need, you need O, the next one is uh, M, then just hit the arrow and go to M. And that's kind of, you'll, you'll go back and forth. S-O-T-A, that's what I need right there. And then just do back. So now I do back, just the little button right here, back, and now it just shows soda there, and now I have my message field. So now message text, I'm going to do edit text. This one here in the middle, edit text on the bottom. Uh, this is taking a lot longer than I wanted because it's got to focus. I want you to see it this time. I made another video and see it. So I'm going to hit edit text. And now there's the field right there. So now I'm going to go ahead and put in whiskey six. And this is, this is real time. Hit the number six. The stroke is already there. Stroke. Go back to... Uh, ABC, let's do Charlie, ABC, Tango, um, hit the one, two, three, get the dash, go back to ABC, uh, nope, go on, and let's do one, two, three, and then, so now look, so now look, I'm right here, uh, focus, all right, so see, I want it to go over, so I'm going to hit that arrow down the bottom now, the top one, and space, okay, so space is there. So space and then the arrow. And that's what brought me over. So it wants to go each character. So I did space and then I did the arrow and now I'm right there. So now I'm going to do my frequency. And look, it's already up for the frequency too. Because I just happened to be there for the numbers. One, two, three. Because see the ABC, that's how you toggle back and forth. If I hit ABC, then I come back to the, num I come back to the letters. If I need the letters, I hit one, two, three. One, two, three. Now there they are. Now I'm going to enter the call sign or the frequency 146 and then insert. Oops, not insert, sorry. 146. Hit the little, uh, when you hit the one, two, three, again, you'll see the little, little thing right here. And then you look for the one in the middle, which is this one. 
And then go back to one, two, three, five, two, oh. And then space, arrow over. Now we gotta do FM, so I'm just going through the whole thing, just using the alphanumeric key. F, M, space, arrow over. And I'm gonna put testing because I'm testing. P, Q, S, T, test. I, N, G. There. Now remember, my call sign is already programmed into this radio, so it knows what to do. So once I'm done with that, I can just hit back. Once I hit back, because I'm done putting my edits in there, if you will. I think it's because my hands, it's trying to focus on my hands, maybe. All right, so see, that's just what it says right there. So to, now, whiskey six, stroke Charlie Tango, dash one, two, three, space, the frequency, space, FM, the mode, space, testing. Or I can put on, on now, or uh, 10 minute ETA, or uh, I can put in multiple freaks. I could put 146 dot, you know, FM. I could put space 14 dot FM. I could put, you know, I could put different things in there that are acceptable to the soda format. Uh, so that's what you do. And then MTX right here. Message transmit. There. I just sent that message out. And I will screenshot. Now the other thing too, let's see if it goes through here reasonably quick while I'm talking. Um, so that message went out. And what'll happen, I've got mine set up to where, let me go like this. I got mine set up to where, oh, that's why it's focused on my face. <laughs> okay, there we go. So I've got mine set up, focus, there we go, to where when it gets the message to the soda site and then comes back down, it'll do an alarm, diddly, diddly, or this like little funky alarm. Um, you know, it's kind of tough inside the garage. Uh, we got some weather going on right now. But it'll do an alarm. I have that set up for an alarm. I also have a set up with this LED light right here. It turns white and flashes because I want to know that. And if I'm getting a message, even if I didn't do it, uh, APRS to soda message, if I'm hiking and my wife sends me a message from her cell phone and this is on my shoulder like it was in my last video, which I'll link over here's more space. Uh, oh, I'll link over here somewhere. The one I just did in Idaho with this radio. Okay, so it just transmitted again. Um, but it'll pull that out and it'll go to lead and give me a message. And I know my wife or somebody sent me a message. It could be my wife, could be anybody. And then I'm able to know, Hey, Jerry, I, me specifically just got a message. I'll pull that thing off. I'll look at it and I'm able to check out that message. So that's how you do APRS to soda. Again, register first. When you're done registering, you'll get the confirmation. That means you're allowed. You're on the list to use APRS to soda. I just showed you the format to send up, uh, your, your, your spot and then it comes back down. I hear Adam actually calling on 5-2 right now. Uh, so I'm gonna probably spot him. But the other thing with this is, uh, in the second video I'll show you how to use your cell phone uh, to do those messages back and forth and also how to read the messages off of here. But it's pretty simple. I'm waiting for the message to come back telling me it was acknowledged uh, before this message is over. Otherwise, uh, I'm just gonna just go forever here. So uh, I'll show you how to read messages on here, but for now, that's all you need to know on how to send a message to the APRS Gateway. Thanks for watching. Again, if you haven't already, please subscribe, uh, give a thumbs up, make a comment. Let me know what you want to see for other videos, other videos on this, other videos on that, other videos on whatever else I do. Let me know. Thanks.